It's been one year since the March 2018 start of the Gaza border riots. Today, I'll take some time to clarify the misinformation and get to the truth of Hamas's ongoing attacks against Israel. First, let's begin with the basics. Where exactly are these riots happening? Gaza borders the southwest side of Israel, right on the shore of the Mediterranean Sea. It's about twice the size of Washington DC with a population of almost 2 million people. From 1967 until 2005, Gaza was under Israeli control, but in 2005, Israel unilaterally disengaged from Gaza, removing all Israeli citizens and giving complete control of the area over to the Palestinian Authority, with the hopes that they would create a modern, free and democratic society of their own. In 2007, the Islamist terrorist organization Hamas took over the Gaza Strip, violently removing the Palestinian Authority, and since then, the territory and the Palestinians in Gaza have been under Hamas's control. The stated goal of Hamas is the destruction of the State of Israel. To do this, Hamas has orchestrated suicide bombings in Israel, killing hundreds of Israeli civilians. They fired over 20,000 rockets and even abducted Israeli soldiers and civilians. In 2018, Hamas decided to try a new tactic to attack Israel, an attempt at mass infiltration of rioters and terrorists together along the border with Israel with the goal of massacring nearby Israeli families. Nearly every day for the past year, Hamas has sent rioters to breach this fence, often armed with guns, grenades, rockets, Molotov cocktails and bombs. And nearly every day, IDF soldiers have successfully protected the Israeli communities just beyond the border by preventing Hamas from reaching Israeli civilians. Who is involved in these riots? Hamas's propaganda machine has labeled this year-long operation as peaceful protests, and many in the media and at the UN have gone along with this fake label. These are not civilian-led peaceful protests. Purportedly beginning as a civilian initiative, these events were appropriated by Hamas in order to further its attacks against Israel, to create a heightened security tension around Gaza and to increase political and diplomatic pressure on Israel internally and internationally. They call the riots the Great Return March, showcasing the demand for Palestinians to riot and return to control over the land that now makes up the entirety of the modern state of Israel, which of course would mean the destruction of Israel. Hamas specifically encouraged mass infiltration by Palestinians into Israeli towns and cities, even providing maps to participants on how to get from the border to the closest Israeli homes. Hamas actually hides its militants and commanders amongst the civilians, the press and the medics, and intentionally exploits the knowledge that the IDF makes every effort to avoid using force against non-combatants. There are even official statements by Hamas showcasing the high level of involvement of Hamas operatives in the riots. And Hamas officials have admitted publicly that many of those killed during the events are affiliated with Hamas or other more extreme terrorist organizations in Gaza. In an interview about one of the riots, Hamas official Salah al bardawil said, <laughs> Before that, at least 50% of the martyrs were from Hamas. When Hamas terrorists with militant aims incite the population to push towards the fence and use extreme measures of violence to reach the border, the IDF must do what it can, according with international law, to protect Israeli civilians. Why is this a threat to Israel? We've heard the question, even if most of the rioters are Hamas militants, the IDF is strong, why do you need to use force against them? Before answering that in words, I want you to watch a few of these video clips taken at the riots themselves. Like this one by Yihya Sinwal, a Hamas leader, where he stands at one of the riots rallying points and says, <laughs> Approximately 70,000 Israeli civilians live in the area of southern Israel near the Gaza Strip in approximately 80 communities. Infiltration into Israel poses a real and direct threat to those communities. Attacks against individuals, 
lynchings and abductions are real possibilities by people from the other side incited by violence with the means to carry it out. If these rioters were successful in breaching the border and crossing into Israel, there is no doubt what they would do once they reached Israeli towns and communities. They have explicitly stated their goals in many different forms, and we will take them at their word. But it's not just the threat of a border breach that concerns the IDF. It's also preventing and stopping additional terror acts coming from the rioters at the border. Like grenades thrown over the fence, bombs sent via balloons, and the use of incendiary kites to set Israeli communities on fire. Thousands of these incendiary kites and balloons have been launched into Israel, and while many have been successfully stopped by the IDF, over 2,000 separate fires have been ignited inside Israeli territory, resulting in more than 8,500 acres being burnt, which includes over 3,200 acres of natural reserves and over 2,700 acres of forestry. Balloons carrying explosive devices have also landed in residential areas, including playgrounds and kindergartens, posing a serious risk to the lives of civilians, especially children. So how does Israel respond to these threats? It is extremely important to note that these Gaza border riots are taking place in the territory controlled by a terrorist organization which is leading an ongoing armed conflict against Israel. Additionally, we must keep in mind that these border riots are not isolated events. They are directly connected to the intended violent border breach, the use of incendiary devices and explosives, and rocket attacks on Israeli communities. Therefore, the IDF needs to be constantly prepared for the full spectrum of threats that could occur as part of these riots and border hostilities. According to the IDF's SOP, or Standard Operating Procedures, when a violent riot occurring in the Gaza border area presents a danger to civilians in Israel or to IDF personnel, the danger must first be addressed using verbal warnings, then non-lethal means. <laughs> Any force beyond this, that is, force that is potentially lethal, can only be used in exceptional circumstances. Specifically, where the threat from the violent riot reaches the level of a real and imminent threat to the life or bodily integrity of Israeli civilians or IDF troops, and all relevant non-lethal means have already been exhausted. The use of such force must be deemed necessary in order to remove the threat, and must be proportionate to the threat posed. These SOPs were the subject of a petition to Israel's Supreme Court, during which Israel presented a detailed position of the legality of the SOPs and its activities during the Gaza border events. The Supreme Court rejected the petition against the SOPs and found in favor of Israel's factual and legal arguments. The IDF tries to deter the violent rioters through non-lethal means to avoid higher risk situations, which may call for the use of potentially lethal force. In many cases, however, the IDF has refrained from using potentially lethal force even when individuals and crowds have been at the fence line, sabotaging the security infrastructure and even launching explosives and other projectiles towards IDF troops. What's the outcome of these riots? As these riots have proven, inciting violence, calling for the murder of Israeli civilians, and vowing to take over Israeli towns and cities is not a peaceful protest. Thanks to the vigilance of the IDF soldiers stationed along the border, there has not been a successful mass breach of the border. As recently as March 8, 2019, Hamas terrorists that breached the border were caught with grenades and knives on them. You don't have to use too much imagination to figure out what their intentions were. The pervasive violence from Gaza has also caused significant psychological harm to Israeli civilians living along our southern border. These civilians have been subject to over a decade of increased threats and attacks from the Gaza Strip, including infiltrations, rocket and mortar fire, and in recent years, the threat from the cross-border assault tunnels. This increased threat of mass infiltrations and terror attacks has intensified the psychological effects on Israeli civilians. Specifically, the use of balloons to deliver incendiary de and explosive devices, often attached to objects designed to appear as children's toys and have had severe psychological effect on children in Israel. The violent riots and attacks have also resulted in the death and wounding of IDF soldiers defending Israel in the Gaza border area. 
In July 2018, 21-year-old Staff Sergeant Aviv Levy was killed when he was shot in the chest during a violent riot near the southern Gaza Strip. In January 2019, an IDF officer was wounded by gunshot and in February 2019, an IDF soldier was seriously wounded after an explosive device detonated during a riot. In May 2019, Two IDF soldiers were wounded on the Israeli side of the fence when they were targeted by Palestinian snipers firing from Gaza. A number of other soldiers have also been wounded by shrapnel from grenades and other explosives. Since March 30th, 2018, over 2,000 rockets and mortars have been launched from Gaza at Israel, causing property damage, economic distress, psychological harm, and unfortunately even death and injury. Other attacks during this period have included anti-tank missile fire on a bus carrying IDF soldiers in southern Israel, as well as machine gun fire from Gaza hitting Israeli civilian homes. 